What's up everybody, Nick O'Dwyer back with you for another episode of the 10th inning. This video I'm continuing my all decade teams. I've already done the NBA, already done the MLB, I still have the NFL and the NHL to do. This video I'm giving you the NHL. Now I will say, before I get started in this video, I'm not as versed in the NHL as I am with football, with basketball, with baseball. Therefore, I'm not giving you as long of a list. There are normally six players on the ice at one time. Normally, I would give you a three team for this. So 18 total players. This video, I'm only giving you two teams because, as I said, I'm not as versed with it. So 12 total players, three forwards on each team, two defensemen, one goalie. Now, before I get started in this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the 10th inning if you like all sports content. It's really appreciated. Without further ado, let's get into it. At starting center for the forwards, it's Sidney Crosby. Can we really go against Sidney Crosby right here? I mean, this man dealt with a lot of injuries during the decade, yet still is on pace to finish the decade with the second most points out of any player in the NHL. That's very impressive. 727 points in 589 games, 268 goals, 459 assists, playmaker, First and foremost, goal scorer second, and he has a plus minus of 137 during the decade. Now, plus minus, not the end all say all stat, but it's pretty good. If you have a positive plus minus, that means your team and you pretty good when you're on the ice. If you have a negative plus minus, doesn't mean you're bad. It just means you guys might be getting unlucky. Your team isn't playing well, whatever it may be. But he is a plus 137, just asinine to think. Then, on top of that, he has one Art Ross Trophy, the point leader in the NHL, one Hart Memorial Trophy, the MVP, two Ted Lindsay Trophies, Most Outstanding Player. Now, what's the difference between MVP and Most Outstanding Player? They actually do take an MVP, Most Valuable Player, to your team, and then Ted Lindsay, Outstanding Player. One Maurice Richard tr Trophy, the goal leader of the season, two Conn Smythe trophies, the playoff MVPs, three all-stars, six all-star NHL teams, which is like all NBA, then two Stanley Cups on top of that. You can't go against Sidney Crosby here. Crosby, an all-time great, is on the all-decade team for the 2010s. Now going into my left wing, another all-time great, Alex Ovechkin. Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby had battles throughout their career. It was great to see and Alex Ovechkin might not be as good of a playmaker as Crosby, but he's still a great player in his own right. Now, one thing that Ovechkin had that Crosby didn't really get the luxury to have was he stayed healthy during the decade. He played in 728 games over the decade, and amazingly, Crosby still has more points than Ovechkin. That just says how great of a player Crosby is. But Ovechkin, 720 points in 728 games. 413 goals, 307 assists, plus minus of 19, one Hart Memorial Trophy, one Conn Smythe Trophy, six Maurice Richard Trophies, and four All-Star appearances, seven All NHL teams, and one Stanley Cup in his deck in this decade for him. Now Ovechkin, one of the if not the greatest goal scorer of all time. That's not really up for debate. He's up there. He Again, he's just not the playmaker that Crosby was, but he still deserves his spot on the first team for the All-Decade team. That's why he's there. Going into right wing, this is a player who, at the beginning of his career, was so hyped up for being one of the best American hockey players ever. And his name kind of fell down a little bit, but his play really hasn't. That's Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane... 755 points in 699 games, 600, 300 goals, 455 assists, plus minus a 50, one Hart Memorial Trophy, the first American-born player to win this, one Conn Smythe Trophy, one Ted Lindsay Trophy, one Art Ross Trophy, seven-time All-Star, three-time All-NHL team, and he has three Stanley Cups to his name. He had a pretty good decade. He was the leader of those Chicago Blackhawks. And 
basically led them to three Stanley Cups. So, Patrick Kane will be a Hall of Famer one day. That's no question. But he earned himself a spot on this team of the 2010s. Now moving into defense. At my first defensive position, one of the greatest offensive defensemen ever. That's Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson, 371 points in 567 games, 121 goals, 371 assists. He has a plus minus of minus 31. This is where I'm coming in. Plus minus, it means something, but sometimes it doesn't really mean too much. He's a minus 31, but he's one of the best defensemen of the decade. He truly deserves to be truly one of the best defenders of the decade. Carlson has two James Norris trophies to his resume during the decade. That's top defenseman in the NHL, six all-star appearances, and four all-NHL teams. Now, one of the biggest things, I said he was one of the greatest scorers as a defenseman. That's true. Not necessarily point maker. I mean, 371 assists, nothing to sneeze at there. But 121 goals, that's top of any defenseman during the decade. Carlson, you're a first team, all decade player. Now, the other defenseman, there were some great defensemen throughout the decade. So, whoever makes the first team, whoever makes the second team, whoever doesn't make the cut, there are still some great players on there. For first team, I went with Duncan Keith. Now, I know I said plus minus doesn't really mean much, but Duncan Keith, great plus minus as a defenseman. It's a good tool to look at. It just always doesn't tell the whole story. But Duncan Keith, 395 points in 704 games, 54 goals, 341 assists, a plus minus of 82. One James Norris trophy, one Conn Smythe trophy, three all-star appearances, two all-NHL teams, three Stanley Cups during the decade. That's a great resume no matter how you look at it. It's hard to argue against it, but again, these teams will probably look the most different out of anyone else because there are so many great players. But Duncan Keith, Eric Carlson in my first team. Now at goalie, again, kind of like defensemen, there are so many good goalies who you could have chose from over the course of the decade. It was hard to pick just two. I know there are going to be people who don't agree with me on this, but for my first choice, I had to go with Pekka Rinne. Pekka Rinne has a 918 save percentage over the decade, 44 shutouts most of the decade, 2.39 goals allowed average, three all-star appearances, one Vezina Trophy, which is the best goaltender in the NHL, then two all-NHL teams. Now, the most impressive thing there is the 2.39 GAA. So that's goals allowed per minutes allowed when you're on the ice. So if you're on the ice, 60 minutes. You're basically giving up 2.39 goals per 60 minutes. That is a very good number. I would love to have a goalie like that. He had the best one throughout the decade. Now, it was tough. People like Henrik Lundqvist, great at the start of the decade, but he's 37 right now. So the past three seasons, he hasn't been where he once was. That's what put Rene over for me. He's been doing it consistently all decade. Now, even though he's getting up there in age two and he's starting to allow more, 2.39, still a 2.39. So, my first team, just to recap, Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin, Patrick Kane, Eric Carlson, Duncan Keith, and Pekka Rene. That's an all-star first team if I'm looking at it. But now we get into the second team. At center, this might be one of the most controversial ones I'm doing. But, but I'm going with... Steven Stamkos, the center for the Lightning. Now, I easily could have gone with the Edmonton Oilers center, the young center, Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid has had a great start to his career thus far and certainly looks to be on the path to be one of the best players in the NHL over the next decade, over his career. But I just couldn't see... I just couldn't find that main reason to put him over Steven Stamkos. Steven Stamkos, 
not necessarily that he's had one better season than McDavid's ever had, but he's been consistent. That's the big thing for me with choosing Stamkos over McDavid, consistency. Stamkos, 660 points in 619 games, 333 goals, 327 assists, plus minus a 41, one Maurice Richard Trophy, six-time All-Star, two-time NHL All-Star team. Steven Stamkos has definition of consistency right there. Equal playmaker and goal scorer. It's hard to do it, but I also will say Connor McDavid was probably the biggest snub from this team. If I had a third team, he's easily there. I just couldn't see a reason to put him above Steven Stamkos, so I didn't. If you guys want to let me know how stupid I am down in the comment section, just let me know, because I probably am. But get going into the left wing, Jamie Benn. Jamie Benn, 627 points, 703 games, 268 goals to 359 assists, plus minus a 51, one Art Ross trophy, two-time All-Star, three-time All-NHL team. Not much to say about him. Probably the best behind Alex Ovechkin, but Alex Ovechkin has been so good over his whole career that anyone behind him just looks like they're a lot worse than him. Same with any center behind Sidney Crosby because those two have been so good that comparing anyone to them that's currently playing isn't really fair to them. So, Jamie Benn, great player, great decade. Just not when compared to Alex Ovechkin, but still deserves a spot on this list. At right wing, young player coming up. Now, I know. Well, why'd you pitch Stamkos, but not McDavid? Because McDavid's a young up-and-comer. Well, center had a little more competition than right wing. At right wing, Nikita, Nikita Kucherov. Now, young player coming up. 502 points, 483 games, 201 goals, 301 assists. But his plus-minus did it for me. A plus-minus of 107 during the decade. That's that's an average of more than 10 per year for all you math people out there. What more do you want? That means your team is performing when you're on the ice. That's what you want. One Hart Memorial Trophy. One Ted Lindsay Trophy. One Art Ross Trophy. Three-time All-Star. Three-time All-NHL. One of the best up-and-comers in the league. Deserves to make a spot on this list, but then once again, I will say, McDavid probably got snubbed, but there's not as much of competition for right wing. That's why Kucherov is on this team. Now, final three players. At defense, Dr Drew Doughty. Doughty, 406 points in 730 games. 94 goals, 312 assists. One... Norris Trophy, defenseman, five-time All-Star, four-time All-NHL team. He deserves a spot on this list again. Defense was tough to go by, but one of the most consistent playmakers from the defensive position, he will do what is needed to get you guys some points. And he's a big physical guy, dowdy on this team. Hard for me to argue with it. Second defenseman, Shea Weber. Shea Weber, 399 goals in 644 games, 151 goals, 248 assists, plus minus 68, one Marc Messier leadership, and he's been top five in the Norris Trophy four times. Now, he's never won, but he's been top five voting four times for that trophy. That tells me he's one of the most consistently good defensive players in the league, and that's exactly what it is. He is a five-time All-Star, four-time All-NHL team. Can't go against Weber. He's a playmaker one, but he's also a goal scorer from that defense position. That's kind of what you want. He's an offensive defenseman, so kind of like Carlson. So Shea Weber, Drew Doughty, Nikita Kucherov, Jamie Benn, Steven Stamkos on the ice, now at center. Now at goalie for the second team, Mark andre Fleury. Mark andre Fleury, this guy has been so good 
a 917 save percentage, 44, sorry, 42 shutouts, second to Rene with 44, 2.42 goals allowed per average, four all-star appearances, two Stanley Cups in his career. Marc-Andre Fleury, great on the Penguins at the start of this decade, great on the night at the end of the decade. Can't really say much more about it. If you guys disagree with me, let me know down in the comment section. For the 10th inning, Nico Dwyer, see you.